Has anyone else noticed that pretty much everywhere you look, everybody seems to be unhappy nowadays? Like, it just seems like there's this overarching level of disappointment, dissatisfaction, depression, and just general misery. I don't say that to be dramatic, but I have noticed that with my generation, millennials, and the generations that come after me, that there just seems to be this feeling of never being able to be satisfied or happy. And it's something that I wanna talk about. A few weeks ago, I had a small handful of friends over and we all got to talking about this and we came to the conclusion that by and large, there are two main groups that almost everybody fits into nowadays. Group A, we're gonna call the social butterflies. These are the people that growing up had a lot of fun. They were spontaneous, they traveled, they partied, they ate out. They did all sorts of things without really worrying about the future. These are the people that today have a lot of friends, have a lot of hobbies, and really feel like they got a lot of enjoyment out of life, but are now living in a very stressful situation, realizing that they don't have any stability for their future. More than likely, these people are in a lot of debt or at the very least have no savings. They might be stuck in a job that they hate, but that they're stuck in just to be able to pay their basic bills. They're probably living with roommates or with their parents well into their 30s. And though this group of people may not have any regrets for the life experience they have, nor should they, they do seem to have a lot of regret for the amount of money they spent and for the lack of regard they had for their own future and their own stability. I've had discussions with friends who fall into this group, and what they've said to me is that they enjoyed traveling, they enjoyed partying, they enjoyed doing all those things, but they wish so badly that they had saved a little bit more money, or that they had taken school a little bit more seriously. Oh, I have three kids and no money! Why can't I have no kids and three money? On the flip side is group B. We're gonna call these guys the savers, and I definitely fall into this group. This is the group of people who on the outside appear to have their life together. They might have a house, they might have a car, they might run a business, maybe they have a family, what have you. But all of this came at a hefty cost too, because in order to be able to accomplish all of these things, in order to be able to secure this stable future for yourself, this level of comfort, we had to say no to an awful lot of things growing up. And so we might have saved money and we don't regret saving that money, but we definitely regret not living a little bit more, not being a little bit more spontaneous, not saying yes to experiences a little bit more when we were younger. I think what this really comes down to is a conversation of delayed gratification. And to me, that is a fascinating topic. Group A are people who were not able to delay gratification. They're the people who want instant gratification. They're the people who got their money and spent their money and had their fun and didn't worry about the future. And group B were the people who really delayed gratification, maybe to a point of fault. People who were not allowing themselves to have any fun and who were in fact willing to take on temporary discomfort for long-term stability and comfort, which I definitely did. And as a result, I have a house and a business and level of comfort and stability that I absolutely would not trade for the world. But I wish that I had been able to have a little bit more fun, to be a little bit more social, to spend money a little bit more freely because for as long as I can remember, since I basically got my first paycheck ever and even before that, I worried about money. I had this conscious idea that I had to save as much money as possible to be able to set myself up to have the stability that I now have. I knew that from the start. Maybe part of that was growing up poor. Probably definitely it was from growing up poor. But I just always had this scarcity mindset knowing that anytime I said yes to something, I was saying no to something else. And objectively that's true but it shouldn't be. I think appearance is a big part of this. Everybody's trying to project themselves with a certain appearance to the public, and especially on social media. Group A might appear as somebody who's popular, who has a lot of friends, who's a lot of fun to hang out with. And group B might appear to be mature, might appear like they have their life together, might appear like they're responsible. And both of those have merits, but both of them come with a lot of downfall as well. Rarely do people broadcast their unhappiness, but when you get into deep conversations with people that you know personally, you'll find that everybody has regret. The spenders wish that they saved, the savers wish that they spent, the people who are renting and scrounging every dollar together trying to cover their basic bills wish they had been more responsible, and those of us who were responsible feel like we missed out on so much of life. And what do we do? A lot of this comes down to us having to make major compromises based on the cost of living and in particular the cost of housing today. And I think that millennials are probably the first generation to really experience it because I know our parents sure didn't. Our parents were able to spend their teens, their 20s being reckless, spending money, partying, doing whatever they want to do. And then when they got to their late 20s and early 30s, they were able to go buy single family detached homes on a single income, generally an income that they were able to earn without a degree. And that was just the norm. The decisions that they made when they were young and reckless didn't have any effect on their ability to live stable, healthy, happy adult lives later on. And that's something that nowadays we just can't relate to. And so I think that there's two real questions that we have to ask here. The first question is what leads to a happier, more fulfilled life? 
Is it a life with a strong sense of community, a lot of friends, a lot of life experiences, or is it one with stability and comfort and financial security? And that's a really hard question to answer because both of those things are so intensely important in having a well-rounded, happy life. And then question number two is really just the flip side of this. It's what is more likely to cause somebody to be unhappy and unfulfilled and miserable? A life with debt and financial instability and uncertainty, or a life where you feel like you've missed out, where you maybe don't have as many friends, you don't feel like you've experienced as much, and you just don't feel like you've lived as much and had as much fun as you could have. And again, that's a really hard question to answer because I'd say that stability and community are equally important. We could circle back here to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which I know I've referenced in the past, but the bottom line is that in order to become a happy, well-rounded, healthy human being, we need balance in our lives. We need a balance of community and friendships and relationships, but we also need a sense of comfort and stability and familiarity and security. And so what do we do when we have to pick between those two things? You might be thinking that the common sense answer is just to find some midpoint in between where you live a little and you also plan for your future, you spend a little, you save a little, you say yes sometimes, you say no other times, and that seems fair enough. My goodness, what an idea. Why didn't I think of that? But it's just not realistic, unfortunately. Housing nowadays is so over the top expensive that I know for a fact if I had said yes to a few more things, I would have just been saying no to buying a house. And so that's the decision that I made and there's parts of me that are happy with the decision I made and parts of me that are not. And I know plenty of people on the other side of the aisle who feel exactly the same way. So what do we do? I feel like another discussion could be had here as well on the merits of formal education. I'm one of the only people I know who has absolutely zero post-secondary education, like none. Everybody else in my friend group either has a degree or a diploma or they at least went to college or university even if they dropped out or they went to trade school even if they didn't finish. Like Everybody has some sort of a post-secondary something that they tried to pursue, except for me. I have never once applied to a college or a university. I've never went step foot on a college or university campus. I don't even know what it looks like beyond movies. A lot of people told me I was making a huge mistake when I left high school without any intention of pursuing a further education, and those same people would probably be really impressed that I managed to accomplish the things that I accomplished but I'm not impressed. The fact is that the money that I didn't spend on tuition was my down payment for my house. Like I couldn't have both things. If I had gone into debt for school or if I had to pay 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars for tuition, I wouldn't have been able to buy a house. It's, it's that straight up. Hopefully I would have gone for a degree that would make me a lot of money and maybe later on it would have worked out. I don't really know, but as of today, the math just doesn't check out. My tuition payment went to a down payment and everybody that I know who went to university or college and got a degree all of them are either renting with roommates or living at home still with their parents. And so you might be thinking, oh, well then, you know, congratulations to Cole, you made the right decision. And again, part of me feels like, yeah, I did. I didn't spend the money on tuition and therefore I was able to buy a house, but I also missed out on the social experience of going to university. And truthfully, that's the only thing that I feel that I regret at all about not going to college or university is just the social experience. But yeah, I did miss out on that. And so, okay, all these people don't have the financial stability, but they have the social experience. They were able to make friends and network and go to parties and do things that I didn't do because I wasn't a part of that crowd. I was working already. And so I wish that I could wrap up this video with some sort of like nugget of wisdom or some sort of objective conclusion or answer. But unfortunately, I just don't have one. Everybody that I've spoken to, myself included, we all feel disappointment and regret. We all wish we had made different choices while simultaneously not regretting any of the choices we made. And that's a weird predicament to live in. As they say, the grass is always greener on the other side. But I suppose we're gonna have to come to one of two solutions here. We're either gonna continue forward on the same trajectory that we're on, where everybody is just constantly disappointed with the decisions they made, feeling like they've missed out on opportunities and robbed themselves of the things that were important to them, or maybe nobody will own a property or have any sort of financial stability ever until their parents pass away and they inherit the house or the money, which is a really sad thought to have, but it might just happen. I suppose option three is we could just start pushing billionaires into wood chippers and that would probably solve a lot of our problems. But yeah, those are just my thoughts. I know this video has probably come across a little bit scattered and chaotic. I didn't have any notes written down or anything. I wanted to just kind of have an open-ended discussion with you guys. And I would love to hear your thoughts on this topic. I would love to hear your perspective. Uh, so drop me a comment down below and let me know. Let me know if you were more of a spender or a saver, if you were more spontaneous or more disciplined. And more importantly, let me know how you feel about it now when you're a little bit older. Let me know if you have any regrets for the decisions you made or any solutions perhaps. If you enjoyed this video at all, if you found it at all interesting or thought provoking, please go ahead and hit that like button. Feel free to subscribe as well if you haven't done so yet. Follow me on Instagram at according underscore two underscore Nicole. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching as always and I'll see you next week. Take care.